Hello, my name is Jim. Welcome to my booktube channel about books, reading and stuff. In this video I'd like to look at a tag, the Atwood Adventure Tag. This was created by Jolene at Bookworm Adventure Girl. It's about the prompts are related to Margaret Atwood but you don't have to have read any of Margaret Atwood's books to do the tag. Uh, Jolene did a series of 52 Mondays with Margaret looking at all of Margaret Atwood's oeuvre and it's a very large oeuvre, novels, her poetry etc. I enjoy Margaret Atwood's writing. The last book I read by her was Stone Mattress which is a collection of short stories. But the first prompt before publishing her first collection of poetry in the early 60s, Margaret Atwood had several other jobs, including working at summer camps. What was your first job? Well, my first job was a Saturday job at Slough Public Library. This library can be seen in the opening sequence of the office. And I really enjoyed this. I was stacking shelves and I was stamping books out and bring, uh, receiving books back. and. It got me very interested in books. While growing up, Margaret Atwood's family spent several summers or several months each year in the woods of Northern Ontario. What is a survival skill that you have that would help you for living off the grid? Uh, between the ages of 10 and 16, I was in the Scouts and every year for one week there'd be a summer camp and I'd go on the camp but my survival skills are very limited. I could make the fire, but if I didn't have matches or a lighter, I wouldn't be able to light it. I could get the kindling together and build a nice fire, but I'm not sufficiently honed in survival skills to make fire from rubbing two sticks together or hitting flints together or whatever. Margaret Atwood grew up reading comic books. Do you have a favourite comic book or comic book character? I saw Shelley Swearingen do this tag and talk about Calvin and Hobbes. I really love Calvin and Hobbes. So I'll talk about a different comic book. I really like Foot Rock Flats, which was created by the late Murray Ball, who's a New Zealand cartoonist. Foot Rock Flats is very popular in New Zealand and in Australia. It's about a shepherd, Wall, and his dog, just called Dog. Dog does have another name, but he's embarrassed by it and doesn't want anybody using it. And it's hilarious. Margaret Atwood is not only a poet and an author, but she's also illustrated books and shown her creativity in some other ways. What are some ways that you are creative? I like drawing. I also like photography, I take many photos and I like experimenting with photography and with light. Some of Margaret Atwood's stories are influenced by myths, fairy tales and folk tales. What is your favourite myth, folk tale or fairy tale and why? I don't have a favourite. I hear living in Georgia. Uh, there's the influence of Jason and the Argonauts and the Golden Fleece in the mountains around Swanetti. Swanetti's up here somewhere. Yeah. They use sheep's fleece to pan for gold. The nuggets of gold being stuck in the fleeces. And there's a statue of Medea holding the Golden Fleece in Batumi, which is the second city of Georgia. Margaret Atwood's most well-known novel is The Handmaid's Tale. What is a task or chore you wish you had a maid or a servant for? Um, most chores, really. I think I'd like to have somebody with some financial nails, like an accountant or someone, because I have a fear of uh, financial numbers, financial investments. The themes Margaret Atwood writes about have stayed consistent in all her writing for over six decades. She writes about the role of men and women in society, relationships, religion, marriage and identity, to name a few. If Atwood were to write a novel about you, 
What are some themes she would need to include? I don't think she'd write a novel about me. I'm not that interesting. But I think travelling, living in different countries, and, you know, maybe religion would be some themes. I've been baptised three times, but now I would say I'm probably agnostic. Margaret Howard created words for her novels. She's also talked about how this makes it difficult for translators of her work. Do you have a favourite word? I like the word serendipity, meaning finding something by chance that you really need it. I also like the word journey. It's got a nice sound, I like this J sound, a journey. And I like travelling, so journey. Our world was born in Canada and now lives in Canada, but she has also lived in other countries like the United States, England, France, Germany. In Scotland. What countries have you lived in and or what is another country you would like to live in? Uh, I was born in England, I studied in Wales and then in the 80s I went to Australia for a while and in the 90s I lived in France for six years and since 2009 I've lived here in Georgia. Georgia the country, not state. Uh, if I were to live in somewhere else, I'm not sure. With the governments, I'd probably like somewhere like Denmark or Finland or New Zealand because they have governments whose ideas I can respect. One of the reasons I'm not interested in going back to Britain is because this whole Brexit debacle which has alienated me from my countrymen there. Margaret Atwood is an advocate for caring for the earth. What is something you do to take care of our planet? As many of you know, I have this collection of little cars, but I don't have a real car. When I lived in England, I had a succession of cars. I had four cars in England, four different cars. But here in Tbilisi, I don't drive. Partly it's because the driving in Tbilisi is crazy, it's also living in a capital city, but it's also because it's damaging to the environment having a car and driving around. In England, on a weekend, I'd often fill the car with a lot of foreign students and we'd go somewhere within two or three hours of Worcester, to have a look around like Stratford which is Shakespeare's birthplace or Stonehenge or Caerphilly Castle or the Welsh coast just to have a look and for that I needed a car but here living in Tbilisi I don't need a car it's inconvenient going out of Tbilisi if you don't have a car because public transport's quite limited but in the city I don't need a car number 11 Margaret Atwood is passionate about animal rights and some of her writing has included animals and reflections on animals. What's a topic you're passionate about? I'm very passionate against racism and xenophobia and nationalism. I think these crazy stories people tell each other that <coughs> because they're born in a certain country that they are superior to the people in the opposite the neighbouring country is just crazy because the people in the neighbouring country have similar stories that they're superior and it's just these nations, these states, these are myths, these are fictions that we create for ourselves. Georgians are very passionate about their country and they're very uh, condescending of neighbouring Armenia. The final prompt is Margaret Atwood is supportive of new authors in a variety of ways. Who is a newer author and or what debut novel do you wish more people knew about? Here I would say Michael P. Smith. I read The Devil in the Red Dirt last year. He's an Australian author 
and he only has something like 20 or so ratings in Goodreads and I thought this was fantastic this was one of my top three reads of the year and I don't know why he's not better known who do I tag last time I did a tag I forgot about the who do I tag bit but for this tag I'll tag Nikki at Red Dot Reads I'll tag Arian and Prometheus at Book Zealots and I'll tag Jere at Drawn to Stories and I'll link all these channels below and also Bookworm Adventure Girls channel. If you like this video you can like and subscribe below and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.